But I'm back, bro. I told you I'm in it to win it. I ain't never getting out of it. I started YouTube last year, and I ain't never getting out of it. Now, unless I'm locked up or I'm dead. So I appreciate y'all for those of you who are going to be coming back. And, the, of course, man, for those of y'all who's just, you know, seeing me right now. If. So, again, like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. I do not watch these videos and upload them like I pretend or like I act like or pretend like I ain't never seen it. I never seen this video. I never do that, bro. All these videos, every last one of my uploads, bro. All of them has been videos I've never seen before except for one. All right. And if I did see the video, of course, I'll let y'all know. So hopefully, y'all been safe and sound, drinking plenty of water, staying fed, man. Hopefully, y'all been having a great week today, Wednesday. Of course, y'all won't see the video till Thursday or Friday. But hopefully, y'all having a good mid, you know, week so far. And uh, yeah, again, bro, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, y'all been good. And I appreciate y'all, bro. On my soul, man. I appreciate every last one of y'all. I know I ain't be... You know, getting like a thousand views probably on this video, bro. But I appreciate every last one of y'all. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get into the video. Let me go ahead and give y'all what y'all came here to see. Unsolved mysteries, bro. Hopefully, y'all be rocking with it. Hopefully, y'all stay to the end. And again, thank y'all. 21-year-old Jewel Jean yeah, Buskin, on. or Julie as she will be referred to, lived in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in 1996. Right. Julie was born and raised in Benton, Arkansas and moved to Oklahoma to study at Oklahoma University. She worked at the university's golf course. Mm -hmm. Julie was on her way to earning her bachelor's degree in dance. She was an aspiring ballerina and after college Julie wanted to open up a studio and teach children to dance. Julie was described as popular and had many friends at school. She was also very talented. Julie spent the evening of December 19th of 1996 with her friend Ryan James at his grandparents' house. Ryan worked with Julie at the golf course. After dinner, they watched a movie. In addition, the two made plans to have lunch the next day. Mm -hmm. Julie stayed at his grandparents' house until 10 p.m., then left to hang out with some of her other friends. Julie and her friends played Monopoly and exchanged Christmas gifts at one of the friends' houses. Julie mm -hmm. said her goodbyes since she was scheduled to move back home the next day. Her semester at college had just ended. Her roommate Megan was also there. Julie promised Megan she would give her a ride to Will Rogers Airport the next morning at 5 o'clock a.m. Julie mm -hmm. and Megan decided to pull an all-nighter. They left the friend's house and drove to a restaurant called The Kettle around 2 a.m. When they were done, Julie and Megan drove to the gas station, got some gas, and a cappuccino. They returned to their apartment a little after 3 o'clock a.m. to pick up Megan's belongings. A while later, the two left the apartment again and headed- Bro, first and foremost, bro. God, bro. This, shorty, shorty doing a whole lot of moving, bro. And this is not the type of female, bro, I'd be messing around with. Not that there's anything really too wrong with it. But, bro, you pose a bigger threat. Of you getting kidnapped. I don't care if you're a dude. If you're a man, bro. You pose a threat. You pose a greater threat of you getting killed. You pose a greater threat of you getting robbed. You pose a greater threat to yourself getting kidnapped. Just so much more shit, you know, could just happen. Greater. You know what I mean? Like, the chances of you getting anything done to you, bro, is much greater, bro. Because when you outside like that, bro... Dog, I'm telling you right now, bro. Outside is the devil's playground. You don't never know, bro, what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't never know what's going to happen, like, right now, bro. At this second, as you watch my video. At this second right now, as you watch my video, bro, someone could just knock down your door, bro, with a gun, coming inside your house, bro, and demand everybody in there to do what the fuck he wants them to do or she. You get what I'm saying? Especially when we got no protection at home. I keep telling y'all, bro, make sure y'all get protection. Like a gun, taser, just anything. Except for like a knife or whatever, bro. Something something that can just deliver trage trajectory. Like, it's hard, bro. Anything, bro, that can shoot is something, bro. You know what they say, bro? Never bring a knife to a gunfight. But again, bro, like when you outside like that, that many times, that often, bro, you just pose a greater threat of anything happening to you. You feel me? Like you just put yourself in harm's way. It's too much, bro. Like, oh, it's a lot, bro. She's been doing, but rest in peace, bro. Rest First in peace. Airport around 4:30 a.m. I'm not gonna. I'm obviously not gonna be reacting to the whole thing because this shit's over an hour and a half, bro. Like, I ain't got time for that. And I'm sure you guys ain't gonna be watching me. Probably none of y'all gonna be watching me till no fucking one hour. All right, but uh, let's go ahead and get into the video, bro. Just all y'all know that. There. I mean, of course, y'all can see Megan how long the video is when y'all click on it. But watched Julie drive away from the airport in her red eagle summit. 
Okay. Around 5.30 a.m. at the Dublin West Apartments where Julie lived, many of the residents... I ain't even gonna lie, this probably gonna be our last one, like our first and last. One of the residents made a 911 call to report what they had heard. Hold on, let's back up a little bit. The West I'm Apartments where Julie lived, many of the residents heard a woman scream in terror. Oh, okay. One of the residents made a 911 call to report what they had heard. Mm -hmm. Number one. Yes, we were just sleeping, and my wife heard a really strange, like a really awful scream from our parking lot of our apartment complex. Do you see anything outside? No, I'm kind of afraid to go outside, actually. A few hours later, Ryan James turned up at Julie's apartment for their scheduled lunch date. Julie was nowhere to be found, however. Her car right. was also missing. Ryan then reported her missing. Not long after that, Julie's parents arrived at her apartment. They drove from Arkansas to help Julie with her move back home. Instead of mm. their daughter, they found policemen who informed them that Julie was missing. 12 hours after she disappeared, Julie Buskin's body... Man, when I have children, man, I, you know, I, I do plan on having children, bro. But what I do, when they get up, you know... When, when, when they get up and do shit, when they start to do that, you know what I mean? Like, what I mean by that is, like, when they get older and start having jobs, going to school, like, getting on, when they have their own vehicle, when they're out doing shit, you know what I mean, bro? I'm always going to be on them. I don't give a shit what, how y'all put it, bro, what y'all say, bro, I'm always going to be on them. Bro, from an infant up to, like, till I die, my nigga, I'm going to be calling them, seeing what's up, bro, what they up to, what they going to be up to, you feel me? Like, I'm always going to be on their ass, bro. I don't care, bro. That's my baby, nigga. But yeah, like, shit. Found on the bank of a lake about 15 miles from her apartment. Her hands were tied behind her back with a pair of shoelaces, and from the waist up, she was in the water. She's probably raped. Julie had been shot once execution style. The gunshot wound to the back of her head was a contact wound. Hmm. There was also some evidence that she had been assaulted. Yep, probably raped. At the lake. Investigators found possible evidence in the sand near Julie's body. There were two sets of footprints that went down to the lake, and mm -hmm. only one that returned. Mm -hmm. One set belonged to Julie, and the other police believed belonged to the person who shot her. Mm -hmm. After examining the footprint and consulting Nike, it was determined that the footprint was consistent with a size 9 men's Nike running shoe, specifically a Nike Air 2 running shoe. Mm -hmm. About 20 feet from Julie's body, investigators found a crumpled pink leotard with the initials JB on the label. Is that it hers? was Julie's. Okay. The leotard had male DNA. Bro, if you a criminal, bro, <laughs> I hate to say it that way, bro, but if you a criminal out doing shit, bro, and you leave one of your clothing, like your t-shirt, your jacket, your underwear, your pants, your socks, you're stupid, and you deserve to go to jail. On it, ...and was subsequently stored to be used later when DNA technology was more advanced. An autopsy confirmed Julie was shot with a single 22 caliber bullet. Mm -hmm. The specific gun used was quite distinctive, but more on that later. Julie Buskin had quite a lot of friends at the university, and investigators set out to interview as many of them as possible. They hoped someone could provide useful information, but that was not the case. There was no one that openly disliked Julie, and she didn't have any bad breakups or anything of the sort. Ooh. Police found Julie's apartment in perfect order. My there were no to die. of any struggle taking place. They All found right. Julie's car in an apartment complex just one block away from where she lived. Yeah. Red sand on the floor of the car looked similar to the red sand at the banks of the lake where Julie's body was found. Mm -hmm. This was seen as rather bizarre by investigators. Why would someone abduct Julie? take her life at the lake, and then drive her car back to almost the exact location where the abduction took place. Frustratingly, there were no foreign hairs, fibers, or prints in the car. Also, no evidence of a struggle taking place. Hmm. Julie's phone was missing. Wherever this was, they knew what they were doing. Investigators obtained her cell phone records to see if it could be useful. Mm -hmm. The cell phone records indicated that someone made two phone calls after she was not alive anymore. One of the calls was for the weather forecast and the other to a number not in service at the time. Despite mm -hmm. the leads and a $70,000 reward, there were no significant breaks and the case went cold. 70 grand. She boy, man, I'm on my way, son. For a short while. 
Rest in peace. Then a month after Julie's life was ended, a man called the police. He said that on the night Julie was abducted, he saw a car like hers pull out in front of him and they almost collided. This was near the lake. The witness followed Julie's car for about five miles because he wanted to confront the driver. The driver kept looking at the witness constantly through the rearview mirror and sped off. Hmm. The witness saw a glimpse of the driver's face and was then tasked with describing him to the investigators. This is the sketch they came up with of the young man that was driving Julie's car away from the lake. Hmm. He was possibly a college student, possibly Hispanic with long black hair and a muscular build. The composite sketch was broadcast repeatedly by the local media in Oklahoma. Nothing popped up. No one recognized him. The case went cold for four and a half years. Police received a letter from a female inmate at the Oklahoma County Jail. Well, 12 minutes. an old acquaintance of hers might have taken Julie's life. Mm. He was 23-year-old Dennis Sturmer. Sturmer was a construction worker and had no criminal record. But at the time of the crime, he lived just four blocks away from Julie's I mean, from cat, though, but that sketch looked just like him. And, and he bore a resemblance to the composite sketch. Yeah, I was about to say. Sturmer refused to answer any questions and would not provide his DNA sample. He did it. Police had to get a court order to collect his DNA. His DNA profile was very, very close to the sample that was taken off the leotard at the crime scene. You hear that? Very close. Very, very close is not a He's match, not and he was right. not considered a suspect anymore. Right. Sturmer's only immediate living male relative was his brother. Just because it's very close does not mean that's what it is. 